The Small Business Show, episode 229 for Wednesday, June 26th, 2019. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show well, where we've been bringing you the business every week. <laughs> or is that giving you the business? It's giving you the business, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's even better. Sponsors for this episode include Linode at linode.com slash SPS. And a new sponsor for us, Clear at clearme.com slash business. A different URL, but you're going to want to go there. We'll talk about why in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. How you doing, man? Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, lots going on, and that's Great. a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let's jump right in it since we were just, uh, both so, so busy today. But uh, quick, quick note: if if you're uh, visiting the website, we're doing some website redesign, so you may see some uh, something may look odd once in a while. But uh, rest assured, we're getting it taken care of. Uh, yeah, but let us know. Get, like, if you see something yeah. odd or see something that you like or don't like, yes. let us know. Feedback at businessshow.co. We would love to hear from you. Um, because that, you know, we make this for you. We, we know yep. all the information that's up there. We don't need the website. So it truly is for all of you. So, yeah, yeah. that's cool. And along the same lines, uh, I posted a poll today in the small business support group at, uh, business show.co slash Facebook. It'll get you over there, you know, and we're interested in learning more about what you want to hear on the show. Uh, do you want to hear more practical business advice? You want more motivational tips, more guests? Um, there's a few other options listed there too. And you can create your own topic to vote on if you want. So please go to businessshow.co slash Facebook to share your feedback. Yeah. I'd love to hear, cool. love to hear from you. Yeah. Um, so Today on the show, I've been reading a lot and we've been talking about motivation and our inner judge. We had some, you know, a good episode a few weeks ago about your subconscious. And, and I want to kind of round that up uh, this week and talk about habits and this idea. Uh, you know, we, we talk about uh, Scott Adams talent stack concept uh, about, you know, bringing together your talents and not not having to be great at one thing, but be good at a lot of different things to be successful. And we we discussed that in terms of a revenue stack as well before on the show. And today I'd like to talk about developing a habit stack and see if we can uh, get some useful information about that. Sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, I cool. I have, I actually already have a, a comment to make. And Scott does say that you, you don't need to be an expert. You just need to be good at lots of different things so that you can get, like get the job done. I, I would say even more important than being good at it is being willing to do it because oh that's really good yeah right because if you wait until if you say oh i can't do that because i'm not good enough at that skill then it doesn't get done unless you unless you outsource or you know delegate or something like yeah. that but if you're not in a position where you can do that either you don't have the people or you can't afford the people or the people are busy doing other things sometimes it just takes a willingness to do it knowing that you're not good at it like that's sometimes the hardest and best thing that you can do so there you yeah go. no i like it and, and be willing to do it badly <laughs> be willing <laughs> to, to do it. it badly that's it because you can yeah. think about it you, you know how good are you as an editor let me ask that question right yeah. you know if somebody writes something and it's awful can you right. read that and fix it yes okay uh, now the, I would ask the same group of people, all of you, are you a good writer? And some people say, oh, no, I need somebody else to do the writing. Yeah. Well, if you're a yeah. good editor, you can be a good writer. Just write something terrible and then become an editor and you're good to go. And the same is true for lots of other things. But, uh, you know, writing is a great example because there's so many things for our businesses that we need to write. You know, oh, we huge. just talked about yeah. the Web page, you know, an about yep. page or this or that. Well, I don't know how to write this stuff, so I won't do it. No, no, no. Bad habit. I don't know how yeah. to write this stuff, so I'm going to do it and then I'm going to look at it objectively and know that, you know, it. here's the thing. If you think you're really good at something, you won't look as critically at what you've done as if you know you're terrible at it. And in the end, it might be better off to know you're terrible. Yeah. At least to have that, uh, the concept of you could be, you, <laughs> you could, could be, be terrible. terrible, right? You yeah. could be, you might be bad at this, it, even yeah. if you've been good at it every other time, like looking really, truly evaluating your work, but you just do the work. It, it, yep. it's way easier than you think. 
It is. And I think like for me, you mentioned that comment about writing and content creation is, is an important, really important part about uh, or of success in a small business. I don't care what you're, what kind of content you're creating. Yep. You're going to be doing a lot of writing. And, and one of the things that I'm always super critical of, and it held me back for a long time was like my grammar and being worried about, Oh, it's run on sentences and this and all this kind of stuff. But there are tons of tools out there that'll solve that problem for you. You know, uh, I rely on Grammarly uh, every single day. And, you know, it, putting content in there and, and it's not only is it finding the mistakes that I make, but it's teaching me not to make them again. And I love it. And I, I mean, I just use the free version and I pump thousands of uh, words through that thing, you know, over and over again. So I, it's definitely. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I got to yeah. check out and, Grammarly. And, I'm, I'm a I'm a. A, a crazy grammar person. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, and and, and th those of us that are not are intimidated by, yeah. uh, you know, because wow, I don't want to put this because somebody's going to point something out. So when I w do it, and, and the great thing about Grammarly is they have plugins for everything. You know, right. Chrome. Uh, you know, all the browsers. You can. Uh, they don't have it for for Office on the Mac, but they do on Windows. But okay. you know, everything else, and they have their own standalone app on the Mac that you can just, I, I cut and paste in it because I don't like to create in it. Sure. Um, and, and they give you, a, they gamify it. So every week you get an email say, hey, you're writing more words than 78% of other users or you used more, uh, uh, you know, different kinds of words. I mean, they've, they've done a great job. I really like it. See, this is a classic example though, because I, in my own mind, and and in, I think it's it's not an incorrect assessment to make. I'm I'm pretty good with grammar. And yeah, I would agree. But because of that, I never think to use I'm too good to use a tool like Grammarly. What oh, a it's... terrible mistake to for me to make. Like, what would be the worst thing about me taking something I've written and putting it into Grammarly? The worst yeah, thing it takes is two to, seconds. It's yeah. right. I just wasted two seconds and Grammarly had no uh, you know, no suggestion yeah, to reaffirm how, how, right. how good you're and, and I, I'm often surprised like, oh, there's you know, I'm actually not as bad as that. But certain things that I create i have now gone back and i look at even some of the blog posts because i i post the episodes on the on the website after we record yeah, yeah you know and i find i find stuff there all the time like oh that's been up there nobody said anything <laughs> you oh, know yeah. but but grammarly will tell you so lots of tools out there uh to to get you and help you develop better habits of uh you know writing or whatever it is i, um, I will share i know we're on a tangent here that's okay i, I will share one more habit you're good Yep. It, in terms of grammar, when you write something before you send it, especially if it's something oh, long, read yeah. it aloud. S uh, just read emails. It. Say it out loud, because yep. if you can't read it with normal cadence and pacing and if you're out of breath, it's because it's not written well. And that That's can great be advice. fixed. Yeah. So just yeah. read it out loud. It's so simple. Yeah. Especially emails, because we're all in a rush. You're going to fire off this quick email and you'd be amazed just reading it over once. How many errors you will you will find, totally. you know, and and making making that uh, making those corrections. So speaking of habits, you know, habits are we're, we're big fans of the system approach to uh, being successful here, meaning not focusing on you know, a, a big goal that's hanging way out there that if you don't meet, you, you know, you're a failure, but rather developing systems, small uh, tasks and things you can do every single day that will get you towards the goal. Like rather than having a goal of I'm going to the gym every day, it's, hey, I want to be healthy. And this is one of the parts of the system for me to get healthy. And you can start that by just putting your gym clothes on. And then the maybe the next step is, hey, I drove to the gym. <laughs> I didn't get there. I got in. I had a protein shake. And the next time I was I worked out or whatever. So there's lots. It's it's breaking everything down into little pieces. And I think habits are a a, a big part of achieving those larger goals um, and shifting the focus away from your your own willpower and trying to motivate yourself to just small steps that you that can lead you down the path to your your ultimate goal of world domination that we're all headed towards. Right. That's right. When you get, that's an okay goal to have because when you yeah, get you there, know. you don't need any more momentum. That's it. You've made it. Yep. You're <laughs> finished. It. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And, yeah. and I think, uh, habits, you know, they, they drive your decision-making and, and they drive so much outcome in our lives. You know, I, I recently read a quote 
And it said that habits are the underlying driving force of either success or failure, greatness or mediocrity. Oh, and the more, right. And the yeah. more I think about it, the more it is, I, be, I really believe it is. It's those small habits. Um, and using that, that, the, that stack metaphor, you know, let, let's talk about how we can create positive habits and then bury negative ones down lower in the stack. And when, when I talk about this stuff, it's not just for us. You can use these tactics and these strategies to help yourself as well as your employees, you know, contractors, whatever. Habits like this impact your entire organization. You know, th- think about like customer service issues. How, how do they get resolved? People are falling back on the habits that you've developed over time and that they've developed on how to handle, you know, surely there are good and bad habits involved that you can work on and uh, do it. So let, let, let's go and talk about how we get into these habits uh, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. No, and, I, I and, like this because you, you're right. The, a good habit, you're fine. And, and neither one of them takes any thought once it's happening. Right. A good yeah, habit. And, and, it's just happening. A bad habit. Yeah. And also. that's, a, and that's a good point. It's, it's, being actively aware of the habit is is probably 90 percent of the uh solution to improve on positive habits and then to lessen negative habits is yeah. being actively aware of what's going on and we fall into the habits for the reward that they give us right positive habits like interacting with people you kind of you know you build your self-esteem you it gives you a good uh you know uh, back and forth with people you feel better about yourself if you create a to-do list or a to-did list and then you look at it and you have all these check boxes of things you did you feel good i've accomplished something you know we talked about going to the gym that makes you feel better you're getting healthy um you know, for me, waking up early is a big deal because I've always been a night monkey and not an early morning person. But now I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm up at, you know, six every day and I get these certain things done and I start the day much more productive. Um, negative habits like checking social media too many times, you know, for that dopamine hit for those comments and likes that uh, stuff. I think that's a big distraction during the day. Having a drink or smoke when you get home, when you get stressed out. And kind of disconnecting that may not be, you know, certainly in excess is a negative. One thing that I really I like, I like that idea. Be, you know, I mean, we're talking about self awareness here in a in a, yeah. in a in a grand scheme, but but specifically about our habits and watch what you do when you're stressed. Like that's, that's a, a big great, deal. That's a great yep. one to really pay attention to because it might just be, you know, a minute of deep breathing is all you need to get yeah. through whatever that I mean, sometimes there's different levels of stress. I get this right. You know, and and sure. sometimes like if it gets really bad, you, you need to go and talk to somebody about it. And that's OK, too. Right. But being yep. aware of what's happening and what how you react to to stress and, and other things, too. But but stress in 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 general. But, you know, just how you react, like when an email comes in, do you stop everything and do you go and answer it or at least read it? And is that the smartest thing to do? Like I turned off all notification for my emails. I have no idea when emails come in. And once an hour, I go and look at my email. That's great. That's a great habit. Yeah. Cause <laughs> I love other, that. Cause, yeah. And, but I find like for me, I'm definitely, you know, ADD, ADHD, whatever you want to call it. Like, you know, I was, I'm too old to have been diagnosed when I was a kid, but that they definitely would have. And I find that playing music while I'm doing work keeps me from getting from from you know finding those distractions uh oh, yeah. while I'm That's trying great. to get stuff done. But you I mean yeah. it, it took a long time for me to figure that out. It's like, oh right. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get stuff done. I just need to do this and then it's no problem at all. So Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great a great way to do it. Yeah. Um a couple more quick negatives. One of them that I really I really have a problem with and we've all fallen into this trap is that it's the way we talk about other people, uh, whether you think of it as gossip or criticism, and especially when when things that downplay other people's success or achievements in in a petty way that just makes us feel better about ourselves. If if you can overcome that and never do it and only talk positive about people, you're going to be more successful in every single thing you do in your life. Totally. uh, Because there's a great book called The Four Agreements, and I don't remember all four of them. I know I'm bad. But one of them that really stuck with me is uh, one of the agreements is called Be Impeccable With Your Word. Never talk 
uh, uh, like that. Never anything, you know, there is no da 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 da. But, you know, just don't say anything after the word but, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and always be positive, especially, you know, with this online world we live in, you know, and comments and that kind of thing, man. And, and, you know, Dave, you're, you're really good at it. You, I, I, rarely or i don't even I, i'm almost gonna say never i've heard you it's talk not, it's not never it. yeah but i'm, <laughs> I'm just not saying perfect at this right no. none of us are but but in general when you talk we're always trying to recognize the good part of people and that is a huge habit if you can't do that you need to work on it we're going to talk about that next yeah but i want to take you're totally right it it's I, I try to be good at it, especially on social media where oh, once yeah. you say something it is permanent even if you delete it, it's still permanent. Yep. Either somebody archived it or somebody saw it and archived it in their brain. Like the damage is done and Correct. it can it can really be a bad. And and plus, I find from even I, like forget about everybody else. For me alone, if I'm spending my energy focusing on what somebody else is doing wrong or badly or whatever, generally, of course, it's me, you know, projecting something and it's like, yeah. I, I'm not as good at that. And so I'm going to yep. say they're bad. But even if uh, if I just stop doing that and instead focus on what other people do positively, I'm now driven to do better. I don't need yeah, to put absolutely. them down to justify yep. where I am here. If I point at that guy and say, oh, he's doing a great thing that drive. I'm a competitive person. And that yep. co that competitiveness can go either way. I can say I can badmouth somebody or I can good mouth somebody and good mouthing actually leads me to lift up my game instead yeah, of justifying that my game is good enough. Right. And yeah. that's yeah. And, and what you'll find is when you talk that way, you will kind of automatically start surrounding yourself with other people that talk that way. Yep. And that kind of communication really will, will lift you up and help you be successful. And I would really encourage you not, not that we're making the whole show about that, this one habit, but within your own organization, if you hear that kind of talk, man, you got to turn it and uh, really make it positive and say, look, cause it doesn't work. It doesn't, it, you know, it it's never like, never works. It's that, what are the, there's a phrase, you know, revenge is like drinking poison and thinking, you know, you're, enemy is going to die, you know, or something like that. <laughs> I, I don't, I didn't phrase it right, but you get the idea. Yeah. Uh, it just doesn't work. It, it makes you, cause in the back of your mind, you know, that's not good. And right. you're talking about it and it's, it, it'll eat you up and it's not a good thing. So you gotta let it go. And, and it's just a bad way to think is really yes, what it is. is. You just want to, you want to rid yourself of those thoughts. So the one way to do that is to not, yep. not voice them when they happen. Right. It's, it's, it's loser think. It's loser think. Ooh, I like that. You know what? You know what's winner think, man? Is Let's talk. our first sponsor here. I, right you on. know, I, and, and it's a new one for us. As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, it's clear. We're at clearme.com slash business. You can go and sign up for this awesome service. I got the chance to use this on my trip uh, home from San Jose. It what clear does is they allow you. They totally expedite the process of getting uh, through the the whole security lines and everything at the airport, because instead of using your uh, your ID and you got to fish that out and all that stuff, you go to the clear line and they scan your boarding pass and then they scan either your fingerprints or maybe your your eye. They do an eye scan or both. And that's how they authenticate that you are you. And then they bring you right to the front of the line. You put your stuff on the metal detector, especially if you've got pre-check. It's just like this super. I felt like I was a diplomat, man, when I was That's doing awesome. this. It, yeah, I, I felt so important because it took all of about it took me longer to explain it here than it did to actually do it. It's such a cool thing. And, and man, it makes life so much easier. There have been times where. If, it, you know, it takes whatever, 20 minutes to get through security or whatever. And that's like, that's actually pretty good. Like, but this is seconds and it's fantastic. It really, really like th this thing does so well, reduces all your stress. You get to your gate faster. You don't have to fumble for your ID. And the way it works is you go online, clearme.com slash business, and then you use the code business and you sign up online. That'll take all about I don't know, three to five minutes. It really doesn't take all that long. 
and you get two months for free using clearme.com slash business, C-L-E-A-R-M-E.com slash business, code business, two months for free. When you get to the airport for the first time, they, you, you, you know, you, they go through this sort of finishing of the setup process that takes another two minutes. So really also not a big deal. They are all about efficiency, just like us. Very cool thing. You've got to check it out again. Clearme.com slash business. Use code business to get two months for free. You can travel like a diplomat, just like me. It's awesome. I highly recommend it. You got to do it. Okay. Our second sponsor, Linode. We have talked about them before. For your business, you need servers. It might just be a simple server, like a little WordPress site that maybe, you know, doesn't get a ton of traffic or whatever. You just need to get it set up. Well, Linode has 10 data centers all over the world and you can get set up with them for as little as five bucks a month. All their servers are based on SSDs. So you get really, really fast disk reads and all that stuff. And that frankly is the bottleneck that exists in most places but if you need like lots of cpu power because you're getting lots of traffic or whatever that's a good thing and they have that too but for five bucks a month you can start with this nanode server that just gets you going and might actually be enough now if you're a geek like me and you like to do stuff at the command line and you know how to do that you can spin up a server and right there you you know do whatever you want no problem but even if you're a geek like me, you might not have the time to do all that, or you might not know how, or you might not just want to. That's okay, too, because Linode has all of these pre-configured servers ready to go. You need WordPress? Great. Click the button. In about 90 seconds, you've got a server running WordPress. All the Apache and MySQL and PHP or Nginx, whatever it is, all set up, including a WordPress installation, ready to go. You didn't have to do any of the hard work. Same goes for if you want to set up a VPN for yourself. Same kind of thing. Just spin it right up. I, I did that. I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm running a VPN on their $5 a month plan, and it's great. Here's even better, right? If you go to linode.com slash SBS, that's L-I-N-O-D-E dot com slash SBS, you get a $20 credit when you use promo code SBS2019. You don't have to worry. All these promo codes are in our show notes at businessshow.co. And of course, you can get them emailed to you as part of the show notes every week if you just sign up for the email. Linode.com slash SBS, $20 credit using promo code SBS2019. If you're on a $5 a month server, that's four months for free just because you're a listener. Go sign up now. And our thanks to Linode for sponsoring this episode. All right, good man. stuff. It is good stuff. I'm really stoked. <laughs> great. Yeah, two great yeah. sponsors. Totally stoked. Yep. Yeah, that's great. So, uh, we, you know, we're talking about creating this habit habit stack that pushes the positive habits to the top and buries the negative ones. So, you know, l- l- let's talk a little about how we do that. Um, and I, one of the best ways to do it is to increase the positive rewards that you're giving yourself uh, for habits that you want to keep or new habits that you start. Sure. And, and the first step is being more self-aware. Write it down, add it to your lists of habits. Uh, you know, the, as you create this system, what you're trying to achieve, be more productive, be happier, whatever it is, write down these habits that help you do that and really be aware of it. And when you achieve, you know, knock one of those out. We're like, Hey, I did that today. I went to the gym. I got up early. I had a protein shake, whatever the habit is you're trying to do. Recognize when you did it and give yourself a big reward because mentally that reward is going to hit whether it's, uh, you know, I mean, I'm a, I, I love to read. So it's like, Hey, if I could get 15 minutes where no one is, you know, asking me a question or whatever, and I could just sit and read and enjoy that that's a huge reward for me, you know. Uh, so recognize what it is, whether it's relaxing, whether it's going to a movie, whatever it is. Set a reward system in place for those habits that you want to promote to the top of your habit list, and do it over and over, over and over and over again. Yeah, that's how yep. it becomes yep. a habit. That's right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so we also we want to bury those negative habits, you know. And one of the first thing to do is change your routine. Look at your day and think about things that happen during the day that you are not happy with. Like for me, uh, you know, after I sold Tech Restore a couple of years ago and I, you know, our, our building is gone here and they moved it, the company across country, 
I'm working at home now. I have a studio up behind my house and that's my office. But and I, in the beginning, I loved the freedom. Of, hey, I don't have to I don't have to get up so early and do these kind of things. But after a while, I felt that, you know, I'm not as productive because I'm getting start too late of a start. You know, I do a lot of stuff on the East yeah, you're Coast. Not, you're not accountable kind of to any of you. Yeah. You don't have employees that you have to go and like check yep. in with. Yep. So, yeah. yeah, they used to get me into the office. Oh, I got to be in there. You know, I want to be in there first. Or I want to be in there right, you know, early. So for me, it was like, OK, the routine, I've got to change. I have to start getting up at, you know, at 6 a.m. And that may be sound like nothing for the rest of you su- successful people out there. But for me, it's a big deal uh, because I'd rather stay up until one in the morning and uh, work at night. But it's, you know. It had served its purpose when I was younger, but not so much now. Um, and so changing that routine. And the next thing to try is replacing the habit to get the same reward. You know, if you, if you want to relax or, you know, you're like, well, I could have a beer, a glass of wine, you know, something like that. Well, maybe something else would help you relax. Maybe going for a walk, maybe reading, maybe meditating for a few minutes, you know, maybe listening to the small business show. You never know. And uh, so, so try to get the same reward by changing up the habit that you're doing. I want to point out a habit that you, that all the secrets that you ever need are delivered to you every week by Mr. Shannon Jean right here. Uh, and, I don't, uh, I don't uh, know about that. Well, the one that's <laughs> well, I'm here anyway. <laughs> yeah, you're here. See what I mean? The one that I think is the easiest way to ensure you have time to run your business and start your business and all of this, but it's the hardest one for so many of us to do is one that Shannon gives us. Maybe he doesn't deliver it every week, but most weeks and certainly, you know, many times a year, he tells us, great. You want to start a business? Cool. Do you watch TV at night? Great. Stop watching TV at Stop. night. <laughs> and and you, you instantly now have several hours a day where you can yep. start your new business. I just made more time for you. Most of us, yeah. most of us ignore that. Don't cancel ignore, your Netflix. Cancel. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. My kids would kill me. I of mean, course. Like, I those are your kids. Let your kids watch it. But take it off your phone, your iPad, whatever. Yeah, you, don't don't right. do it. Yep. Don't do it. Yep. Uh, you can instantly carve out hours a day. Most people by, you know, eliminating media, it used to just be TV, but now right. on it's more than that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But, but think about what you do. It, and if, and if you don't want to do it, that's fine. Or you're already successful and that. Maybe that is your reward that you want. Now, one of my former partners was like, Hey, I really like to disconnect at night. I want to watch TV. You know, uh, don't, don't call me, text me or email me at 10 PM. Right. Okay. Which I've been known, known to do. Of course. Uh, and I'm like, OK, yeah. no problem. No problem. And he's like, that's my reward. So if you really want an hour on Netflix, maybe you say, OK, whenever I achieve this habit that I'm trying to set in place, I'll, I'll get an hour or half an hour, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Um, yeah. 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 But kill your TV was really a good statement back in the 60s or whenever that that first came out. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you're so totally the other, right ahead, about it. But it's it's yep. just not an easy thing for most no, people. It's, it, most it's people not. don't want to do that is what it yeah. comes down to. Yeah. So, so t- tw- like I said, the, the twist on it is maybe you don't have to eliminate it, but maybe that is your carrot. Maybe yeah. that is, I love to disconnect. I want to sit on the couch or whatever it is. And uh, then just use it in a different manner. Yeah. Maybe that's the answer. My Instead problem going, is going even if I'm sitting on the couch watching TV, it's rare that I don't grab my laptop. And like, Absolutely. like last night, you and I were going over some stuff on the website it was like there yep. was some show on, but it was like, oh, this is way yep. more interesting to me because I can be engaged on this. I'm not yeah. just tuned out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I'm a bit of a workaholic and I love working and I defined a big part of my life by that work. So one of the tricks that I had done for myself is with that laptop is I would only work as long as my battery lasted. And uh, for many, many years, it worked great. But as technology got better, better. <laughs> <laughs> it just, you know, I can still say that, but I, you can work for, you know, six or eight hours now. But, yeah, uh, yeah but you anyway, can work for, it, yeah, exactly. Six yeah. or eight hours, easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So the, the other thing is, uh, you know, looking at, at bad habits is to remove the temptation to change uh, the way things work and like. For me, I'm a beer guy. You know, we've talked about it on the show here. I, I love drinking beer, but I don't really drink beer during the week uh, because I get tired and this kind of thing. And I just, it's not a good habit that I want to be into. Right. And 
so I have a kegerator at my house that has uh, set up for two different kinds of beer, which I love. And it's great on the weekend and my friends over and that kind of thing. But that kegerator is up on the uh, hillside next to my studio out on the deck and it has a cover. So for me to go get a beer, I have to leave my house, walk up the couple of uh, flights of stairs in my you know garden there next to the pool and go up there. And it keeps me from coming up and getting a beer. And, and on the weekend, it's great. Cause I enjoy walking up here and looking yeah. around and I can, you know, so it's yeah. good. So tricks like that, whether it's, yeah, I'm a huge sweets guy and I eat too many sweets. So it's like, Hey, put the cookies in the back of the cabinet. So every time you open the cabinet, you don't see that first thing. Right. You yeah. Know, whatever it is, yeah. whatever it is, you yeah. know, trick yourself into uh, changing those bad habits. Uh, you know, you'll be uh, better served, you know? Um, and again, you want to work on one habit at a time. It's not this whole thing that's overwhelming and and you guys are probably way ahead of me anyway, but small steps toward victory while actively rewarding yourself. It, that is is really important and, and keeping a list and being just focused on it. Do it over and over and then don't freak out if you miss a day. It, it, it it's not, it's okay. Just come back. Okay. Well, I didn't, I didn't hit that today. And, but you know, tomorrow and the next day, just think about it as part of your system here. You're not going for perfection. You're just trying to develop it over time. Um, and you know, go back and listen. We've done a couple of shows recently. Uh, the one I mentioned earlier about your inner judge and kind of programming yourself. That's, that's right along in this, this uh, theme that we've been on lately. And then the other one we talked about last year, I think it was in August. We'll have a link in the show uh, notes is all about persistence and how persistence is just another big key to success and also helping you to build these habits. So if you do it for 30 days, 60 days, whatever it is, uh, you'll do it over and over. Yeah. And and I've talked about it before on the show here where I, um, I, I will tell my team or whatever, hey, there's something new I want to try. Let's try it for two weeks. Uh, it's that that is a unbelievably great advice. And I've done that on my kids, everything. It works. I do it perfect. on myself. Yeah, I give myself it's, permission. It's like I'm just idea. gonna do this for two weeks. And yeah. I know I'm tricking myself. Like I'm fully aware yeah. of it. But giving my just like Scott Adams with his, he can he doesn't have to go to the gym, but he does have to put his gym clothes on. And of course, yep. once he does that, then it's like, well, I might as well get in the car and drive to the gym, you know, but I, I can bail out at any time. And, and that two week trial thing, I, I know that I'm giving myself permission to fail. And because yeah, I'm a human, I, I will it's fail. Really like, a good piece of advice. Yeah. yeah. And so that two week thing or whatever it is, but I find it for, for those types of things, two weeks is the right amount because you get over that, that resistance that you have to change. That's a huge yeah. part of it, right? We're humans. Yep. We are change resistant beings at our core. So, okay, it's just two weeks. So, okay, fine. I can, I can fight through this. And by, but by the end of week one, usually that's enough, but sometimes it takes two weeks, but usually by the end of week one, it's a new habit. Like I'm not, I, I don't that's have right. to, I don't have to put any energy into thinking about doing it. It just happens. And well, and your, your comment that it gives you permission to fail. I love that because I always, I hate failing. I, I mean, I do it all the time, but what I don't like about it is it, I don't like that aspect of my story when I'm telling people like what I do and this and that, and it keeps me from talking about new things, Right. but because I'm parent like, Oh, I'm starting this new thing that because I don't want to say that all the time. Cause I think it sounds flaky. Yeah. Um, so I always talk about what I've done, you know, and that's I think that's a more solid story. Um, but this way you can say, oh, I'm experimenting with this new thing. I'm going to see how it works after a couple of weeks. It's just a great way to uh, bring in new things and shake things up and change your routine. I, I think it's and you don't advice. even have to tell other people about it. Like you can yeah. just have this this two week commitment to yourself, too. That's the beauty True. of it is you, yeah. you really can. I mean, it, there's probably something unhealthy about being secretive about changing your ha yeah. habits. It's probably better to be upfront about it. But I am like you in this regard. I do not want to tell people until until I've succeeded at changing yeah, my habit, too. then I'm all about it. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, of yeah. course, yeah, of course, <laughs> it's easy. Yeah, that yeah, it's easy. Right. Yeah. yeah, you got it. Well, folks, you know, we really appreciate you listening. Dave and I love helping you each week talking about your small business, whether you're just getting started or, you know, you've had them for years. We would really appreciate if you can help out the small business show by leaving us a review uh, on the Apple podcast directory. 
So just go to businessshow.co slash review, and that'll take you right there. A couple more clicks and you can leave us a review, but uh, we really appreciate it. And thanks for your support. Absolutely. Yeah. Those reviews help far more than you might, might realize. So it does, it makes a big difference. Even just one review yours makes a huge difference. So please. Yeah. We'd love it. If you go do that. All right, man. Well, I don't have anything else. I'm done. That's it. Done for the day. Done for the day. Yeah, same. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you again, folks. Thanks, Shannon. This is a this is thank you, Dave. This is yeah, habits. It's good. See you next week. Living that charmed life. 